Hello everybody and welcome back to Constructed Clash. I have won the die roll. Mason is so fast on the GL have fun. It's because he's recording way sooner than I am. Good luck, my friend. Let the clash begin. So we won the die roll because I mean our decks are linear, we're in modern, we're definitely gonna choose to go first. And with that being said, let's get started. We have two ramp spells and a volo kit. I actually think these are the type of hands you keep. Your deck is supposed to be super threat dense, and with Bloodbraid Elves, it's even more threat dense because it gives us a very dense amount of stuff in our deck. If we draw an explorer, it's even better. So we're gonna keep this hand and we're gonna lead off with that volo kit. Today's episode of Constructed Clash is brought to you by patreon.com slash ccmtg. If you love this content as well as our podcasts, go to patreon.com slash ccmtg. Become a patron of Constructed Criticism. And you can go to patreon.com uh, slash Heasy Game Media to become a patron of my exclusive content on Heasy Game Media. Uh, not a ton yet, but if, if you love what I do and, and what Mason do, does, uh, check that out because, you know, we're, uh, we're going to be co-owners soon. So we're really excited about that. All right, we've let off with that Volokut. Mason, uh, it's his turn. I expect him to lead off with something like a Noble Hierarch. Uh, or, you know, knowing Mason, maybe he in Aquiries. Uh, nope, no Hollow Boys. We are going with that Horizon Canopy. With that sweet, sweet Moto Bug Art. And no Noble Hierarch. Instead, he leads, out, leads off with a Birds of Paradise. Uh, which means that we have a really good Farseek turn ahead of us. So, uh, you know, we drew a land. It is possible that we're supposed to lead with that Wooded Foothills instead, uh, just to get things uh, more into play. We're going to get Shelter Thicket, though. We were definitely always going to do that. Um, one of the... You know what? I think Wooded Foothills for Forest would have been the better play. Um, but, you know, we made we made mistakes. We're not going to compound them by getting the wrong land. We definitely don't need to be cycling in this matchup. Uh, you know, once you see that green land, he could be on green-white uh, combo. He could be on Bant. He could be on tons of different decks. But knowing that he is on a, a fair deck with Birds of Paradise means it's probably not as fair as we think it is. Uh, that Ghost Quarter is super interesting. Being able to hit that Volokut right away, uh, putting making us go grab a different type of land could be really important for him. Ah, Knight of the Reliquary. Uh, really, really aggressive start for Mason here. Uh, he could he could have a very big night next turn. So we're gonna go ahead and start. We're gonna go ahead and play this land, uh, and then play our beautiful secure tribe elder here, uh, giving us something to block that night of the reliquary with, uh, as well as advancing our game plan to play a primeval titan next turn. And like I said, this is one of the reasons to keep these type of two man two ramp spell hands with follow cut is uh, if he if he taps his man in a, in an interesting way here, we can go grab a green red land and another mountain, and this this titan might actually be able to go ahead and uh, and win the game for us pretty soon, killing this knight of the relic player, killing his other creatures. So we'll see what Mason does this turn, but if he taps out on mana, it could be a real problem for him. We could go to three, four, five. Yeah, we. If he taps out, we can get six in play and wipe Mason's current board for mountains. We have a white. Could it be path to exile? What does Path to Exile do here? If he paths, plus he Ghost Quarters. So Ghost Quarter is going to go first. He's Ghost Quartering his own land with a white floating. Going all the way up to a 4-4. Four four. Really putting his thing in further range from Primeval Titan.
What you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you, Mason, Mason? Alright. So, this thing is all the way up to a 5-5 five five now. A 6-6 six six now. Once it's, a, once it's attacking. But we can really do a lot of damage to Mason here. Uh, going ahead and blocking. Getting enough mountains into play. Playing that Primeval Titan. And just really wiping his board. Depending on what he does. But he can get in 6 early damage here. He can play that that path to exile that you know we think we know he has we're going to go ahead and sacrifice this and take that six damage uh you know moto's going to lag for us but i think that's okay i think we're going to make it we're going to make it through that moto lag uh with that being said we definitely want to grab a mountain uh <clears throat> we want to do everything we can to make this grab mountain as well uh but it's this he's Mason's in a little bit of trouble, I think. Yeah, we get he gets in that six damage though, which is is quite a bit. We're gonna go down to thirteen grabbing uh the other shelter thicket. I think that shelter thicket is still correct. We're not going to have time to be cycling those. And once we get that shelter thing in play with this follow cut, uh, any cinder laser and stuff are going to deal damage anyway. And even if we had drawn the shelter thing, we would just play it as a land, a land. So at that point, we would much rather have those same lands be dealing damage and be able to come to play untapped. So with that being said, let's go to 13 and let's start killing Mason's dudes. Three. We're going to sacrifice this. We're going to go grab a Cinder Glade. And we're going to start wiping Mason's board, putting him down on mana as well as other things. I would love to use Primeval Titan's ability. I'll go ahead and go grab some of our Shock Lands. Uh, is we don't want to be taking damage later in this game. So we'll go ahead and take those two cards. Uh, they'll come into play. We'll choose not to pay the life. And then we'll go ahead and and deal damage to some of Mason's creatures. We've got that moto lag again, but I'm, I, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it because these Noble Hierarchs are going to hit the bin. I would love to use that ability, and I would like to use that one as well, Moto. Yes, I would. So, we'll see what uh, Mason can do here. Uh, even something like a Path to Exile doesn't seem that powerful. That Ghost Quarter, however, could do a lot of damage uh, going ahead and, uh, you know, getting getting lands out of our deck. We'll go ahead and grab that Last Forest. Uh, you know, this Primeval Titan is going to be pretty powerful, depending on what happens. Uh, but I think that Path to Exile is going to have something to say about it, as Mason is tapping for a white mana, which means that Power Mule Titan could be hitting the Exile Zone. All right. So, we got to draw one of our more powerful cards at this point. However, a Volokut could even itself be really good for us here. Like I said, these green-white decks have a lot of power to them in in the form of interaction against Volokut, whether it's Path to Exile, uh, Ghost Quarter, things like that. It, it can be pretty rough for you. But, you know, even something like Blood Bloodbright Elf or something like that, how good is that here? Not very good. This Night of the Reliquary, I really need to draw either a Scape Shift uh, to get the last one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six mountains left in our deck, which does give us enough damage to go ahead and kill Mason if we draw a Scape Shift. Primeval Titan does a lot too. You can go grab Double Log Kit and then go ahead and... Uh, play one of these mountains. Summoner's Pack, the same thing. We grab Double Mountain, or Double Volokit, play one of these mountains, and kill that Night of the Reliquary. And the Mason's kind of up a creek. However, if we draw a land, we're in big trouble. If we draw an Explorer, that Explorer better be really good. Things like that could make things pretty difficult for us. So, with that being said, we're still waiting on Mason to attack. It could be the Moto's lagging, I'm not quite sure. We got a lot going on right now, but Mason is in a very favorable position after a pretty good start versus Volokit. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything's okay over there.
You know, Mason, Mason's, uh, he's lagging a little bit here. Letting his clock run down, letting things happen here. Mason could also be considering playing the last card in his hand. He does say he's thinking here. So he could be saying, I'm going to sacrifice this forest, go get another land to, uh, to get a land untapped, and then uh, crack in from there, or, uh, or double spell from there. So, with that being said, Mason does decide to attack. And Lightning Bolt is not what we wanted to draw. We will, uh, I think, I so we have a couple of options. One of which is to just bolt a bird, leaving Mason on two mana. I think that's fine. But if we draw a Volokut, it leaves us dead to this. Neither Reliquary. So we're actually going to leave Volokut as an out so that we can kill Knight of the Reliquary instead of killing this bird. I think that that is the better play. Uh, look at Mason with his sweet lands up in here. That's so beautiful. Three mana... For a tireless tracker, Mason can go ahead and, uh, ooh, the combat begins. So, we have very little outs at this point. I think it's very safe for us to go ahead and kill this before his untap step. Uh, we are going to die to it if we draw the Volcut either way. So now we need to draw, specifically, Primeval Titan or Scapeshift. And that does nothing for us. We'll go ahead and say GG here. Got a little bit flooded. We did keep a land heavy hand. Uh, Mason with the double Path to Exile for the win. But that being said, we get to go into our sideboard uh, and talk about that from here. So let's see what we can do against this green-white deck. So first of all, Anger of the God seems quite good. I do like Relic of Progenitus against his deck. I, I also like... Uh, diversifying our threats. Uh, I don't like the ancient grudge that Mono just made me do, but I, I do like some of this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. Uh, we have 10 cards that we need to board out. I think the first thing that we board out is one of the Volokuts. Definitely don't need that Nature's Claim we accidentally boarded it in. Uh, I think that these Explorers seem terrible in this matchup, but they could be better than the Farseeks. So we're actually going to start with Farseeks being the thing that we board out. One less option at Bailoth, I think, is totally reasonable. And I think that we we need less scape shifts after board. Uh, but we have too many cards still. So is is our initial impression of this matchup incorrect? Because 26 lands, you know, I, I think that at that point, maybe we actually would rather have the Far Seeks than, this, than the Explorers uh, bring us down to as much as two cards too many. Uh, and at that point, I think that Bailoff is a little bit worse than Blood Red Elf. Scapeshift doesn't seem that good. Uh, and Relic, maybe we just board in one Relic, but maybe we can board in zero. You know, kind of looking at this and, and seeing what's going on. Maybe, maybe the, the actual plan is, is something more like this. So we're going to submit this deck and see how this goes. So Mason had a beautiful 11 card sideboard during his part, so we had to restart a little bit. But I, I decided that I want to take this a little bit of a different route. And I, you know, I think Relic of Regenerous could be good against him. Uh, but I think that the truth is, is that I want these spells to be very powerful. And because of that, I actually wonder if I want, if I do actually want that explore feel versus what I was doing... Um, you know, keeping in those 27 lands. You know, just playing as many 4-drops as I possibly can. So we're actually going to try that instead. We're going to spend our deck, and we'll wait for Mason. Alright, we're going to be on the play again, and hopefully we get a great Explore hand, which we did not! However, if we had a green and forest, this hand would be insane. We'll go ahead and mulligan this. Uh, yeah, this is good enough. I, I would keep this. Basically every time. Uh, sure, that's fine. I'll keep that on top. We'll go ahead and play this. We'll choose not to deal ourselves damage, and we'll go from there.
Mason's deck seems very well positioned against what he thought I was going to play. Uh, Mason fully optimizing the fact that he knows I only own one modern deck here. But I think that uh, I think the green white decks in general are just very good at trying to find incremental hate against Volokit, which is why I even more don't like these linear decks, and I'd, I'd rather play something a little bit more controlling. Courser of Crufix. <coughs> That's pretty good. We're going to go ahead and get a... F uh, we're going to go get a mountain over our deck. Um, as we mentioned before, we want to do as much as we can to get as many mountains as, play as possible. And grabbing another mountain lets us go ahead and grab other types of spells from our deck here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and play this Blood Red Elf, see how good it can possibly be uh, with Mason Clark's Path to Exile on top of the library. I would much rather him try and path this Blood Red Elf than this obstinate Bailoff. So... All right, so we're going to want to grab that Sinner Glade. We're going to play that Bloodbraid Elf. And hopefully what we do is actually hit an Explore, because if we do, we can play that Volca this turn. Uh, we'll go ahead and lightning bolt this. And that ghost quarter is going to come into play for Mason, hitting one of our lands probably, but forcing us to go ahead and get another forest. Um, all the while, Mason gets to attack uh, before we can attack back. Ooh, Mason chooses not to do that, which is an interesting play. Well, we'll go ahead and play our large creature, uh, and then we'll we'll actually play this fetch land. We're gonna make Mason work for it. We're not gonna just play this Volokit into this ghost quarter. But it does let us play Volokut with Search for Tomorrow next turn, allowing us to potentially kill that Knight of the Reliquary. Eldritch Evolution is on top of Mason's deck. Uh, I'm not sure what he gets to grab with that, but it could be super powerful. What I actually see here is a real Ghost Quarter hitting a land play from Mason. But he could just wait. He could just wait for that Volokut. Mason, thinking hard on this turn. Six cards in hand is quite a bit. Uh, obviously, he's going to be able to go back to 20 uh, with a land drop here. The real question is, does he keep his knight out of this range of this Volokut? Mana being tapped. This Knight of the Reliquary is going to go ahead and sacrifice this forest, I'm pretty sure. Going to go and get a fetch land, I would assume. Also gets to shuffle that Eldritch Evolution out of, the, out of play to possibly get an extra land drop. And to get more card advantage off of that Corsair of Crufix. Ooh, 
Ooh, double ghost quarter could possibly get there uh, off of this. Definitely we're supposed to do this way before what we did. So this will be interesting. Mason's casting another spell. What could he be doing? I think we're about 0% to win this game. Even if we draw a Primeval Titan, we're definitely supposed to cast this search for tomorrow so that if we draw a Primeval Titan... Oh, Mason with the Surgical Extraction! Really putting a damper on our situation. So at this point, we do want to go ahead and grab different lands than we would normally grab. We want to grab the Stomping Grounds. You don't want to pay the life. And we want to start attacking. Um, go ahead and attack with just this. Uh, force Mason to not block. And then also leave ourselves some life back if, if things go weird. Mason somehow is up on clock on me considering he hasn't done anything and he takes 10 minutes for every decision so yeah that's a it's a dagger Mason it's a dagger so we'll go ahead and not cast these because we can try I mean I guess it doesn't matter at this point we just don't want to be drawing anything uh, I think Mason's about a hundred percent to win this game uh, we, we have we have basically no outs uh, we didn't born in our tireless trackers and things like that. Uh, Mason surgical extracting those uh, is gonna be, is gonna be a big, big game for him. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take that six. Uh, we need to draw. I don't even know what we could draw to actually get into this game. Even if it is primeval titan, we're still in pretty big trouble. Yeah, that's actually not that helpful for us. We'll go ahead and cycle that. Uh, it doesn't actually deal with Mason support at all. Yeah, and we will go ahead and concede this game and try and play game three just for fun. 
All right, so. All right, so I think that after seeing kind of how Mason's doing things, uh, we do we do want to do board a little bit differently. I think these relics are actually super important. I think Tyler Striker is something that we definitely want. And then I think what we don't want is the bad cards. The cards that we didn't want to play in the first place, things like uh, Bloodbraid Elf. So we'll go ahead and try it this way uh, and see how things go this time. All right, we do want to play first. This is a hand that I can get behind. So we'll go ahead and keep this, uh, you know, really not give Mason a chance to uh, get rid of our Volokits until we play Primeval Titan. All right, so we'll go ahead and start off with a land here. It's going to become a sh sheltered thicket here in a little bit. <clears throat> that Birds of Paradise is coming into play. We're going to grab a sheltered thicket and uh, let him do his thing. And we'll go ahead and grab that other shelter to get it. Once again, I don't think this is a matchup where we actually want to be cycling cards, so. All right, so on this turn, it's it's a pretty easy try and kill his board turn. Uh, it's not it's not even close. Right, and let's see where we go from here. Mason only having green mana. Playing a course of Grufix. And we get to see what his top card could be. We're gonna go ahead and grab a forest. We already have four mountains in play. We're gonna play Primeval Titan next turn, so uh, no reason to to grab mountains this turn. Mason drew that birds and then has another birds on top, so not a great sequence for him here. We'll go ahead and take that three, putting us down to 15 on trying to win the game through a new means. One thing that is beautiful about this Primeval Titan is if he doesn't respond to this trigger right now, we're going to go ahead and grab 
some interesting stuff. Yeah, I would like to use Path to Exile's ability. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a mountain. And what this will actually let me do is grab Volokut Mountain to trigger and kill his Noble Hierarch. Metris Evolution is going to come into play. Probably grab some, uh, th you know, a really powerful three drop, hopefully, for Mason here. All right. Knight of the Reliquary is a powerful three drop, but it won't stand up to these Primeval Titan triggers that are about to happen. I think I'm going to grab Volokut Mountain here, and I'm going to just say good luck, Mason, on this. Uh, like, if he has, I don't know, I don't know what he could have to make this not work, but we're going to we're make his life difficult either way. So, I don't know what Mason's plan here is probably to name Volokut. And I think that that means we get to go ahead and pay for this pact, grab ourselves one of those beautiful, beautiful... Uh, Childish Trackers. And we get to just go ham on Mason's face here. Ah, the lag. The lag is so sweet. Uh, yes, I 
would love to use Primeval Titan's ability. We'll go or have go ahead and grab some fetch lands for our tile tracker. Four mana for Mason means he's gonna go ahead and cast worship. I'm not sure what worship does. We'll have to see that after our lag breaks down. If you increase your control with the damage, reduce your life total. Just reduce your life total instead. Interesting. Mason has a two card combo that might win him the game here. I don't know if we have an out. You know what the truth is, is that we decided not to play Chandra's in this event. I think that's going to cost us, because without Chandra, I don't know that we have enough to win this game. Yeah, I think we're going to lose. Um, I think we have zero outs, so uh, good job. Good job to Mason. All right, and we'll go back and talk to Mason about what he's done.